How you doing? It's your boy Brogan Arc back again with a, another review of Brogan Arc on films. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving my review of Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, the latest HBO Max exclusive that came out a couple weeks ago. Um, and before I get into this video, don't forget to like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel. We're still growing, and we could use your help. So, thanks for doing that. Now. Judas and Black Messiah was announced, I don't know, probably about two years ago, and uh, it focuses on uh, the story of Fred Hampton. It's not necessarily a biopic about Fred Hampton, but it, it focuses on his death and how uh, Fred Hampton, who was the leader of the uh, Illinois, who was the chairman of the Illinois Black Panther Party back in the late 60s, and how uh, his branch was infiltrated by a young guy who was working with for the FBI, he was an informant for the FBI, and that his information led to the death of Fred Hampton. And that's the gist of what this film is focusing on. And it's not a 100% accurate retelling, but that's what the movie is about. Um, not Like I said, it's not about Fred Hampton's life, and it's not really about, um, what's his name, uh, Bill o William O'Neill's life, but it's about what he did in his part of uh, history. And uh, the film is directed by a newcomer called uh, named Shaka King. This is his first uh, direct, uh, first uh, feature length direction, uh, directorial movie. Uh, I think he's worked in TV, and he's a I don't know friend or someone that was brought to the forefront by Ryan Coogler, who you may know from the Creed movies, Fruitvale Station, of course, Black Panther, and uh, Ryan Coogler helped produce this film and. Uh, I have to say, Shaq King, for this being his first movie, I think he did a very good job in, as a director. Um, one of the things that surprised me about this film is the action. There's, there's a good amount of action in this film. I wasn't expecting that. And uh, he did very good at staging those action sequences. And, uh, and I, 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 that's a side note. I noticed that's a trend because the guy that directed um, Creed 2, who's also connected with... Uh, uh, Ryan Kruger also did a good job with action, so he he's at least finding people who can, oh, you know, who can do drama but also do action, and I think that's a good trait for if you're going to be a director in the modern era, you, you should be able to know how to do some action because there's a lot of big budget, middle budget action movies. So um, on that note, I think Shaq King, I would like to see more of his work after seeing this film. Um, now, the film as a whole, I think, is fine. I don't think it's great. I know a lot of people are trying to boost it like it's the great, like, well, not the greatest thing, but like trying to boost it like this is a big, like, ah, type of, man, this is one of those great black films. And I, I don't think it's quite at that level, but it's a, it's a solid movie. Um, as I said, the, f the film focuses on uh, William O'Neill, Bill O'Neill, who was this young guy who um, was a drift, not a drifter, he was a car thief. He's kind of an idiot. Um, the film starts off with him, and he's kind of the main focus. Like, uh, he's played by Lakeith Stanfield. Lakeith Stanfield and Fred Hampton, who's played by um, Danny Kaluuya, they're like the main focus, but it is it is more of, of um, William O'Neill's story as opposed to Fred Hampton's story. And um, as a positive, I would say the cast is really solid, except for like one person in particular, and I'll get more into that. But I think the cast is really good. Um, the, a lot of a lot of black actors who I haven't seen before, or at least haven't seen in a lot of things, but I think everyone did uh, good in their roles, except for one person. Like I said, I'll get into that. Um, the story, I think, is kind of the for me is kind of the biggest hindrance because um, this story is very like I don't want to say triggering, but this story will piss you off, or at least it will piss certain people off because the story is just so. Frustrating. The story focuses on this, you know, this, this black man who's working hard, trying to better his community and the life of people in the in America. And then you have this fucking asshole who comes in and who's on some bullshit and just kind of just throws a big cog in the, a big like wrench or a big blockage in that whole system. And it's like, fuck, you know, it's like it's, it's very frustrating, um, which might hinder how you feel about the film as a whole, but. That, that is one of the things that it, this movie is, I think, deliberately frustrating because the story that it's adapting is very, very frustrating. But um, the, 
the, the, the best part about this is Lakeith Stanfield as uh, Bill O'Neill. Lakeith Stanfield's great. He's a great actor. Um, he's definitely going to be one of the goats once he gets older. But, like, this man is just... He knocks it out of the park. And damn near everything I've seen him in, I, I can't say I've seen a bad performance out of this guy. He has, very, he has a very good range. And in this one, he's playing, you know, he's playing a rat, basically. He's playing this guy who's got the pressure on him. There are moments when he's on edge and he's trying to keep his composure. I think he does a very good job in the role. The only problem is uh, his character is... His character sucks. His character is fucking terrible. Um, just the real guy and then the way he's portrayed in this film. He's just, he's just the worst. He's just the fucking worst. There's a really good moment with the Keith Stanfield's character where the Black Panthers are trying to convince Fred Hampton and his little crew are trying to convince other uh, gangs and groups to kind of jo join up with the Black Panthers. And this, this one gang in particular called the Crowns that they're talking to. One guy that's part of the Crowns recognizes the Keith Stanfield for being a uh, car thief, and then that leads the Black Panthers to kind of question him. And this is a moment where uh, two of the Panthers are testing him to see is he really who he says he, or who he pretends he is. That's a very good moment, the, and the intensity uh, or the, the suspense of that moment with him trying to get his way out of uh, out of that predicament. Really good stuff with um, the Keith Stanfield. Uh, another character in this is uh, Roy Mitchell, who's played by Jesse Plemons. He's the white FBI agent who uh, sees the opportunity in Bill O'Neill and is like, hey, we, we can make these charges go away for stealing the car uh, if you do this for us. And he, he, he does fine in a role. Jesse Plemons is really good at playing assholes with shitty grins like that's the way his face looks it's just like God, you just want to punch him sometimes and he he does have those moments where it's like fuck this guy and um and there's a few moments where they try to give a little bit of sympathy to him but it's also you know fuck that guy um but he's good in the role um dominique fishback is in this i was first aware of her after um, project power with uh, jamie fox that's on netflix she plays uh deborah johnson who is Fred Hampton's um, fiance in real life. They don't really mention her as a fiance in this, but um, she's his fiance. She was his girlfriend. They, uh, she has his son, Fred Hampton Jr. And um, she does very well in this. I like the the story of her as the young poet getting enamored with this, this get with Fred Hampton and their relationship. I think most of that stuff was handled very well, and I like seeing her. She's she's a really good actress. Uh, Martin Sheen's in the movie. He plays Jagger Hoover. He does a good job as Jagger Hoover. The makeup is good on him. Um, who else can I talk about? Oh, as a whole, we uh, kind of funny. We had a, uh, a Get Out reunion because uh, Keith Stanfield, Daniel Kaluuya, and uh, Laura Hari are in this film. Laura Hari has a cameo in this. Not going to say who he plays, but he's in it. It was actually an interesting scene. Um... So, yeah, I've talked about everybody, but, you know, uh, Daniel Kaluuya, who plays Fred Hampton, um, I, I think he's the weakest part of this whole film, in my opinion. I think Daniel Kaluuya's performance as Fred Hampton is uh, not great. I think it's good if you watch it as a whole, but if, see, what ruined it for me, before I watched the film, I ended up watching this documentary. It's on YouTube. It's this documentary about... Um, Fred Hampton's life. It is, it's only like 30 minutes, 35 minutes. And honestly, that documentary is better than this entire film. This film is like two hours and five minutes. And I, that's the problem with this film. I think this film is a little longer than it needed to be. I don't think it needed to be two hours. Um, if It, it could have trimmed it down to just focus on the, the main story. I think there's a little bit of filler there that's not necessary. But... Um, my problems with Dan Kaluuya in this role, I know some people have problems with him, the fact that he's, you know, not American and he's playing an American historical figure. That's valid. It is valid. I'm not going to say it's not valid. Um, not initially my problem with him in the role. My main problem with him in the role is, uh, A, he looks nothing like Fred Hampton. Um, now, granted, Fred Hampton was not a movie. He was a regular guy. He does not have necessarily movie star looks, so it's going to be kind of hard to find, I guess, someone to directly look like him, but Daniel Kaluuya looks nothing like him, but whatever. Um, he's too old, because watching that documentary, one thing I didn't realize, 
Uh, Fred Hampton was 20 years, 20, 21 years old when he died. Daniel Kaluuya is like 30. So I think him being younger really impacts, like this was a young man at the, at the start of his life trying to do something and then got cut down because of, uh, because of fuckery. And I think that's kind of missed on the role. And my biggest problem with Daniel Kaluuya playing Fred Hampton is he sounds ridiculous in this film. <laughs> <laughs> like watching footage of Fred Hampton, like Fred Hampton sounded like a dude from the '60s talking like slang, but and it sounded like legit. Daniel Kaluuya sounds like a fucking parody when he tries to talk whatever slang he's trying to. It does not work. It, it, there was moments I was trying to rock with it, but there was this one scene that's like later on in the film where it's like this big. I, I think it wants to be like the moment in, in Malcolm X when Denzel does the Plymouth Rock, you know, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock, Plymouth Rock landed on us moment. And that's a powerful scene. I think they were trying to break that energy. For me, it wasn't working because he sounded like a fucking cartoon character when he was doing his 60s jab talk slang. It was, it was, it was bad. I'm just saying, for me, it was not working. But he was up there, he like, I don't know. He, like, he couldn't even say the word. He was cutting off the words. Like, he was, it was just bad. He was like, I don't know. I don't know. I do I'm like, dude, fucking enunciate your words. It's, it's, no, it was, it was, it was not working for me. It was, it was not great. And that, it kind of came to a head later on. Um, and I know they're trying to use this to get him an Oscar. And give it to McKee Stanford. McKee Stanford was good. Um, Keith Stanford actually looks like the guy, um, the actual guy, William O'Neill. And that's the thing this movie does. It it kind of, there are certain moments where there's like certain dream sequences, not too much. But there's also moments where they they cut in, it's um, Keith Stanfield playing uh, William O'Neill in a documentary, which is, is, is from the documentary that I was talking about that's on YouTube, where he's being interviewed and he's basically talking about how like, yeah, I was working with the FBI and I was on some bullshit, and um, and the film actually does show some footage from that documentary. Now, one of the well, it's a bit of a spoiler. Well, I don't know if it's really a spoiler because it's history, but I didn't realize that documentary came out in the '90s, and like apparently, like some time after that doc, like, well, like the next day or two after that documentary aired on PBS, uh, William O'Neill killed himself because he realized he was on some fuckery, um, and that's the other frustrating thing is like. There are moments where you like this guy is a rat, and they they just don't realize it. You know, there's a moment the way the movie comes out. I don't know how real it is, but like there are certain moments where it's like that was some shady shit. Why didn't that? Why didn't anyone call him out on that? You know what I'm saying? But whatever. And um, the dynamic, like I said, I feel like the movie focuses a little too much on William O'Neill. He's not that interesting of a character. There's not really that much of a duality. Like for me to care about him, because it's like okay, if I get found out, like there's no, there's no real like, it's not like say like Donnie Brasco where it's like he's an undercover cop invading the mafia. And it's like, oh, he's got his wife and his kids, he's got to worry about. But this is just some dude who got caught up and he's doing some bullshit. And I don't care about him. Um, him and Fred Hampton weren't. It wasn't like him and Fred Hampton were like like buddy buddy, and it was like like Fredo and. Godfather 2 and he felt betrayed by his family. It was They weren't that close. They barely interact like that in the movie. I, I think more of it is just the fact that this guy was there the entire time and he was like making their downfall I think is kind of the frustrating thing. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an okay film. I wouldn't say it's the greatest movie ever. Not a bad movie. Like I said, the direction was good, but it, it just didn't hit as much as I would have liked it to. Like I said, just watch the documentary on on YouTube. It, it, it's, like I said, it's shorter, it gets right to the point, and it's far more impactful watching it than what this film was ultimately. To give a grade for Judas and the Black Messiah, my grade would be a C plus or a 6.5 out of 10. Like I said, not bad, but it's okay. Um, a little too long. The, the music, I couldn't really remember if the score was anything all that memorable because it's not, it's, a, it's set in the 60s, but it's not like one of those movies where like every scene there's like some great 
you know, 60s music playing. It doesn't really do that, which is fine, because I think sometimes movies rely on that too much. Um, the costuming was good. I bought it as a, you know, as a 60s, set in the 60s. You know, it was fine, but um, it's okay film. Check it out. It's on HBO Max. Um, let me know what you thought about the film in the comments. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Peace.